Hi, I'm Tom and Homi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to backup and restore your Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes workloads using Dell EMC Power Protect. For the purpose of this demo, I installed OpenShift 4.4 cluster, which is based on Kubernetes 117. In this version, the volume snapshots feature moved from alpha to beta stage, so it is no longer required to enable feature gates to use this snapshot capability. I deployed a stateful set of application called YugabyteDB. This is a cloud-native database which consists of three masters and three worker nodes. By navigating to the PVC tab, you can see that each pod has its own persistent volume, which is bound to the pod. In our case, each persistent volume is a par store volume. By navigating to the storage classes tab, you can find the par store storage classes. This OpenShift cluster is installed with the Dell EMC par store CSI driver, which allows us to dynamically allocate volumes to our pods. Next, I'm going to the par store UI and clicking on the hosts tab. As part of the CSI driver deployment, the installer configured and created the iSCSI portals for each and every OpenShift worker node. If I go to the Volumes tab, we can see that each OpenShift persistent volume is basically a parcel of volume which is mapped to one of the worker nodes and mounted on the pods. Now, let's navigate to the Power Protect UI. Power Protect Data Manager allows us to protect our production workloads in Kubernetes environments, ensuring that the data is easy to backup and restore, always available, consistent, and durable in a Kubernetes workload or DR situation. If we go to the Storage tab, we can see that our instance is connected to Data Domain as a backup repository. Under Asset Sources, we click on the Kubernetes tab we can see that our OpenShift cluster is already registered to PowerProtect. During the registration process, a PowerProtect pod is deployed in order to communicate between the OpenShift cluster and the CSI driver. Now, it's time to create our first Kubernetes protection policy. I'm navigating to the Protection tab and selecting Protection Policy. Here, I'm clicking on Add. Then. I'm specifying the name of the policy and changing the type to Kubernetes. I'm choosing the crash consistent option and clicking next. Under asset, I'm selecting my Yugabyte application. We can see the total size of the persistent volume claims and even to exclude some of them if needed. Next, I'm creating a backup schedule. I'm selecting a daily backup that keeps the backups for the seven past days. Each backup cycle starts at 8 p.m. and finishes before 6 a.m. Next, I can select the target storage and the connectivity type. I'm clicking next and finish to create the backup job. This can take a few seconds until the backup job is ready. Now that the initial configuration completed, it's time to run our first backup job. I'm navigating to the Assets tab and searching for my namespace. Then, I'm checking it and clicking on Backup Now. I can go to the job to monitor the progress of this backup job. As you can see, the job is already running. Now, I'm opening a console to the OpenShift cluster and running the kubectl get snapshots command. You can see that these snapshots have been created and they are already ready to use. By going to the Parstore UI and selecting one of the persistent volumes, you can see that this Kubernetes snapshot is actually a snapshot of the volume at the storage array level. A major benefit of these snapshots is that these are basically Parstore volume copies, which are globally data reduced, metadata based, so their creation, restore, and deletion 
is instantaneous and they are not copy on write, so there is no performance impact during creation, restore and deletion. At this point, I will fast forward the video up to the point where the backup task completed successfully. Now, let's see how easy it is to restore our Kubernetes stateful application, including the persistent volumes, of course. From the main page, I'm clicking on the Recovery tab and selecting Assets. I can see my Yugabyte namespace here, and by clicking on it, I can see the PVCs and their size. I'm selecting it and clicking Restore. By default, PARProtect shows the latest copy, but I can also select the previous one if needed. I'm selecting the latest one and clicking Next. Here, I have an option to restore it to an alternate Kubernetes cluster or to my original cluster. I'm selecting the original cluster and clicking Next. Next, I can choose to restore the whole namespace or just the persistent volume claims. I'm selecting the whole namespace and clicking Next. Here, I can choose between the original namespace, a new namespace, or an alternate existing namespace. I'm selecting the second option and providing a name for the new namespace. Next, I'm selecting the PVCs I want to restore and click Restore to start the restore task. Within a few seconds, the restore status is changing to running. I can list the persistent volume claims in the new namespace. As you can see, they have been created and bound to the OpenShift worker nodes. If we navigate to the parser UI, we can see that the new volumes have been restored from data domain directly to our parser cluster. At this stage, the parsed protect pod is restoring the persistent volumes data. After a few seconds, you can see that the six application pods are now up and running, and this means that the restore completed successfully and the restore application is ready. By navigating to OpenShift and selecting the new namespace, we can see that the restored pods are up and running, connected to the restored persistent volumes. I hope you'll find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.